Hello again everybody, this is John with BestPriceNutrition.com. Today I'm here to talk to you guys about nutrient density. I've had some questions come up recently on it after we shot the video on how to get lean because in some of my responses to people, um, just asking questions through the inbox, you know, I'll reply, hey, make sure you get your nutrient dense foods and, you know, we'll go, well, what does that mean? Uh, well, first and foremost, let's disseminate between a macro and a micronutrient. A macronutrient is your carbohydrates, protein, fat, you know, micronutrients, your vitamins, minerals, uh, you know, macro meaning you need a lot relative to micronutrients, we need just a little bit. So, for instance, you know, you could, in theory, cover all your needs for your micronutrients within a pill, whereas you couldn't do the same uh, with a similar size, say, for protein, fat, carbohydrates. Um, and really what it means is it's the nutrient content content relative to the energy content. So how many nutrients do you get per the amount of energy, a, aka calories? Um, and it, 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 there's other ways to view it too. Um, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, which we'll post below, had a nice discussion on um, just how to specifically define it. They've got a few different metrics, trying to provide scores and stuff like that with foods. But that becomes difficult because there's so many different nutrients. So for instance, an orange is really rich in vitamin C. So if we were to say rate the nutrient density of it um, by dividing the, you know, crude amount of vitamin C by the total number of calories, it would score pretty good in terms of vitamin C, but it may not be as rich in other um, nutrients. However, it still is a nutrient-dense food. And when we talk about nutrient-dense foods, for our purposes, we'll simplify it. We're talking about fruits, vegetables, uh, meats, fish, um, dairy, um, starchy tubers, some grains, things like that. Um, it, and conversely, anything that doesn't fall into those categories would then be considered, say, non-nutrient dense. Um, so for our purposes, we'll stick with that you know, broad definition of it. And the reason why I came up in the Get Lean, Get Rip video is because the people are the, what I'm talking about there is you're on a hypocaloric diet. In other words, you're taking in less calories than you're burning. So you have less calories to play with than let's just say you were on a hypercaloric diet and your goal was to gain weight. So within that lower amount of calories, you, you have less room to play with. So you gotta make sure you get in those nutrients. Um, you gotta cover your bases. Since you only have 2,000 calories, let's just hypothetically say, to play with, as opposed to, let's just say, if you had 4,000, you have, you, you know what I mean, you have less foods to do with. If you're eating 4,000 calories, you can cover your bases and then you could throw in some non-nutrient dense foods just to get the calories, because you're really just looking for an energy surplus, aka calories. So that's what I mean by that when I answer back with that question. Um, so, and, and the thing to consider too is, is sometimes people then associate non-nutrient dense foods with obesity. That's, there's not a causal relationship there, okay? We know what causes obesity in the sense that it's caused by an energy surplus, basically eating more than you're burning. Now, usually those people who are obese do eat a lot of those non-nutrient dense foods, um, but we can't just say, oh, that's why they're obese, you know, because if that were the case, you know, just then a multivitamin would be the cure to obesity, and clearly we know that's not the case. You know, we know that gut flora plays a key role in controlling hun hunger. Um, liver glycogen levels play a role in that, um, and, and other things play a role in satiety. You know, your nutrient dense foods. So, for instance, like oranges, bananas. It's it's harder to eat a lot of these than say if I were to drink, let's just say, a big gulp of pop or anything like that, which is fine. I'm not here to demonize that. That's fine if you have the calories an activity level to play with it, by all means, you know, um, can have at it. But the difference would be, you know, I, if I had to eat an equivalent amount of bananas as opposed to just say, um, to get the same number of calories from say a couple of Big Gulps or something like that, it'd be harder to do it with bananas than it would be to drink in, you know, uh, big things of pop because that's pretty much all energy. Whereas with this, I'm getting some fiber, I'm getting vitamins, minerals. It tends to be a little bit more satiating, more filling. A lot of fruits, vegetables, for instance, have also water in there. So all those things play a role in, you know, giving us our, our fullness signal. So that's typically why. Um, now that's not to say you can't get fat by eating too much fruit. You know, sometimes people say that. Well, yeah, you trust me, you can. You'll, you'll reach an energy surplus if you try to do that. Um, it's just harder to do it. And usually people that eat those foods tend not to be on that path to try and get fat, if you will. Um, not that everyone who's overweight, you know, intends to be that way. Um, it's just that it's more difficult to do it with these kind of foods. Plus, we know all the benefits of nutrients. You know, nutrients are going to give your body the ability to perform all the processes it does, um, you know, in terms of metabolism, building new structure and tissues. That's what we need nutrients for, be they macro or micro. Um, so that's why it's important. So that's what I mean when I say that. Um, obviously, nutrient demands change based on activity level and size. 
Um, you know, the more active you are, the more nutrients you need because you're demanding more from your body. So, aka, your, your, you know, your, your metabolism is going to go up during that period of time. Um, and I've covered the metabolism myth in other videos too. Um, you know, if somebody's overweight, you actually have a higher metabolism than, say, somebody who's lighter. Um, you know, a good example would be if I walk up the stairs versus, let's just say, somebody who's overweight, that person overweight needs more energy to get up those stairs. It's like, you know, they're an SUV and I'm a, a Prius, if you will, uh, just to give that as an example. Um, also, your body has to work harder just for regular functions day to day because you're overweight. That's part of the problem with being overweight. So, um, if somebody's blaming their um, weight on metabolism, short of it being diagnosed, which is rare, um, relatively speaking, then, you know, look elsewhere. It's because of an energy surplus. Um, so, and if those of you are trying to get lean, I also recommend the nutrient-dense foods, not just because you have less room to play with, but also they tend to be more satiating. That's something else to consider. Um, now, we had some other questions, so I just want to make sure I cover everything for you guys in the video. Um, you know, I think of it, like I said, as in terms of foods too, like I brought up the vitamin C thing. You know, foods are a combination of macronutrients and micronutrients. They're not just one thing in isolation. That's part of the problem with, say, the um, glycemic index, you know. Uh, I am not going to suck down a bunch of table sugar, for instance, without protein or fat in most cases because it's going to be within a food. All of those things affect gastric emptying, which all play a role in that. So. The glycemic index is based on, uh, you know, taking a given carbohydrate in isolation. It varies from individual to individual, so it really is a metric that doesn't apply to the real world. Um, let's see, other questions I've had. Bop, bop, bop. Yeah, again, I can't stress enough, though, you should make sure you eat fruits and vegetables. If you're somebody that doesn't, because, um, you know, when you were a kid, you didn't like them or whatever, um, try again. I mean, I, I mean, I would really tell you to do that. Um, and, and a lot of people can benefit from a multivitamin, you know, um, obviously we sell supplements, so uh, I independent of that, I think a lot of people can benefit from a multivitamin. It's a way to cover your bases um, if you are, say, lacking in one nutrient or the other. Now, if you're eating some perfect diet, let's just say, and you've got it all covered, fine. Um, I don't think that describes most people, although most people should strive towards that. And again, if you have the caloric room based on your goals to have, you know, some of these non-nutrient dense calories, go ahead. It's fine. You need energy to create that surplus. Even if you're on that lower calorie diet, um, you know, you can, if you could fit it in there, fine, but just make sure you get those uh, good nutrient dense foods. Plus, again, you'll be more full. You won't have problems with, um, you know, hunger pangs and things like that, uh, which tends to plague people who are trying to get lean sometimes. Um, so that's, those are all the things to consider. Yeah, I think I covered everything here. I just wanted to do this video because, again, we get a lot of those questions. I hope I defined it well enough for you. Um, again, I will link that uh, a discussion I talked about the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition below um, because I think it's relevant and it was pretty interesting too for those of you who are wonks and want to read a little bit more on it. Um, so please feel free to post questions if you have them in the comment section. I'm happy to answer. Also check us out at facebook.com slash bestpricenutrition. Thank you for watching.